Hello, I'm Taylor. Welcome to IPR's Game Room. Today we're going to be talking about Raccoon Sky Pirates. Flying a ship takes discipline and coordination. Unfortunately, you're a bunch of raccoons. Raccoon Sky Pirates is a GM-less storytelling action RPG by Chris Sellers. As the title suggests, you play a crew of raccoons flying a sky ship, heading off to a house to pilfer better trash. And no, you aren't anthropomorphic raccoons. You're real life raccoons that maybe have a bit of a better understanding of engineering. The whole game takes place across the town, starting in your home junkyard and traveling from neighborhood to neighborhood to a home of your choice, which you're going to be raiding for that trash. Uh, much of the action is going to be happening uh, in and around your skyship, lovingly named the Dumpster Fire, which consists of junk that you've gathered from your own junkyard, including a broken down car, uh, a home appliance, and an abandoned carnival ride. Uh, the rest of the game is played out in uh, the different neighborhoods of the, the, the town, uh, and the house that you have chosen to travel to uh, which is uh, one of several houses that are typically found in uh, different types of, of suburbs and uh, neighborhoods. Uh, the game starts by picking a raccoon. Uh, you have six choices uh, of raccoons that are, are uh, included in the game. And then uh, answering some questions and making choices um, based on which of the raccoons that you, you picked. The game starts by uh, picking a raccoon out of a selection of six that the game provides. And then making some personalized choices to uh, really make that character yours. Then you work as a group to build your skyship. Overall, character creation is super easy and quick. You don't have to assign stats or attributes to your character, and every choice is easy to understand. For the most part, none of your choices have mechanical benefits uh, within the game. The exception to this, of course, is when you're creating your skyship, which has choices that are going to affect uh, what types of roles you can make, or how you can handle different situations. Once you have your characters in your skyship, you're gonna head off and search better trash. Play is done over the course of four scenes, two on your skyship and two in the house that you've chosen to raid. Mechanically, things work actually pretty simply. Uh, on your character sheet, right at the top, you have three different approaches. Uh, for example, Torch Key here has sneaky, deft, and precise. Anytime you need to, need to make a roll, you're gonna pick one of those three approaches. You're then gonna roll a 12-sided die and compare your result with this table right here. This table, which has results from one to 12, have different actions that your character has essentially randomly taken. You go all the way to the side and you can see what type of action that is. For example, a result of four, use the ship's car, home, appliance, or carnival ride deftly is connected to the deft approach. So if I had picked deft as my approach, rolled that result, that would be a successful action. However, if I had rolled something that didn't have a deft uh, tag on it, for example, number five, wriggle inside somewhere is a sneaky action, that would be a failure. It means I didn't u actually use the approach I was intending to use. Now when you fail, you do one of two things. First thing you could do is mark off a square on the track for either the ship or the home. This is gonna add a, a problem or uh, escalate uh, the, the, the worsening chaotic situation that you are currently in. Or you can play a card which adds a new complication to the scene but doesn't advance the track. The problem with playing a card, however, is that sometimes you're not avoiding further complications and escalating of the chaos, you're merely delaying it. Because later on, when somebody fails, they have to check all of the complication cards and the symbols that are on them, and if anything, any of those symbols match to the track, you have to check those off. Um, now, of course, the worst thing that can happen with Skyship is you could explode. As you're checking off those boxes on the ship's tracking sheet, the very last one that you would check off is explosion, meaning you're, that's it, you've lost all your trash, your skyship is gone, uh, and you have to scurry home and uh, admit defeat. Uh, of course, that would be the end of the game. It should be noted that every roll has a 50% chance of success and failure. So you're gonna be failing half the time, you're gonna be succeeding half the time. 
In my personal experience as a game designer and talking to other game designers, uh, I have found that often players don't feel like 50% uh, is uh, fair. Uh, they tend to like things that are closer to 60% or feel that 60% is more fair. Uh, that actually has been backed up by a few scientific studies. However, I think this actually plays into the game really, really well. Uh, the point of the game is to have these failures, is to have these escalating situations. I think if the game had higher success rates, it probably would feel too easy uh, or wouldn't have as much of the, the um, random situations popping up uh, like we did uh, when we played the game here at IPR. I mean, after all, you are playing raccoons and raccoons are kind of chaotic, unpredictable creatures at times. So really good job of cap capturing that spirit of the game. Also, there's some things that you can do to mitigate some of those failures. For example, uh, there is a mechanic where you're able to trade dice between players. So if you do a roll where multiple characters are involved, you can essentially look at your dice and say, uh, this is gonna get me to fail. Let's see if what we can do to trade this around. Uh, essentially kind of tailoring the results. However, when we did this with IPR, that didn't guarantee a success for everybody. At best, it meant we were able to limit down to one failure instead of three or four. Though we did have a few times when we played where we were all able to be successful because of the trade. And it avoided catastrophic failure uh, in that moment. Though it didn't prevent catastrophic failure in the end. Uh, we blew up <laughs> and lost all of our glorious trash. Now, as I mentioned before, you can also play a complication card when you fail. This does help you to prevent marking on your track sheet uh, to get closer to that explosion, for example, or when you're in the house, uh, prevent the need to suddenly escape as everybody is not only aware of you, but chasing you. But it does add a new thing that you're gonna have to navigate and, and uh, build your story on. Uh, for example, one of the very first complication cards that we played was that a murder of crows didn't like us muscling in on their territory and attacked our skyship. Well, it added another element to what was happening. Um, it made it so that we had to address that. Uh, our wonderful aggro character, Rabies Eddie, then had to fend off the murder of crows while the rest of us went down to a golf course to steal a bunch of golf carts which had its own set of setbacks, but in general, we were successful in at least getting back into the sky. The tone of the game is silly and chaotic and fun. This is a great example of what a comedy game should be. It doesn't force any of its own jokes onto you or onto your game. It provides a lot of the elements that you're gonna to need to set up your own punchlines and still sets a tone that is, as I said, silly, chaotic, and fun uh, without being overbearing or, or pushing some type of weird agenda or uh, uh, tone onto you. It essentially allows you to explore and find your own jokes within the established framework that it is provided. A great example of this comes from the characters that you can choose to play from. For example, we have Rabies Eddie. Now, this wasn't done by the game. This damage was actually done by the player uh, who decided to be a bit more method in their, uh, in their way of playing. Um, but to provide some examples right off the sheet, um, you, have, you have the name, Rabies Eddie, which sets a nice tone. You have a quick descriptor, the untamable beast, which gives you an idea of the intention uh, behind the character. But then you get to make some choices. Um, you have under look, one eared and scarred, mangy and irritable, or thousand junkyard stare. Then you have your personal goals, uh, three to choose from, steal something nobody else could appreciate, take on overwhelming odds, or find a reason to go berserk. Um, it's also noted in the game specifically that Rabies Eddie doesn't have rabies, he's just really aggro. So with those choices, uh, you have jokes that are definitely set up for you, but you get to choose basically where you're going to be going, which punchline with this character you are, are going to be heading towards. Um, you have a bit that is set up, 
but you don't have anything that's holding your hand throughout the process. Uh, essentially, this is doing comedy in, in, in a great way. Uh, unlike some of other games that I've, I've read uh, that hail themselves as comedy games, those games will try to explain the joke to you. This one simply allows you to do your own stand-up routine. <laughs> Sorry, I, did, I didn't know what your list of actions were. Uh, so in case this gets edited in, uh, our wonderful uh, AC uh, played Rabies Eddie. And AC is sitting in the room with me. Uh, I didn't know what your list of actions were. I totally forgot that you mentioned one of them was you think you're a bear and act like it? Yeah, yeah, it's one of the first ones that I got. Jettison or toss the first things you see. Did that one also, nope. it was a possum. Reach a breaking point. Did that one. Eat trash you really shouldn't with interesting effects. Is that why you ate glass? That's when I ate glass and I, uh, it was uranium glass and I got Hulk powers. That's right. It. It's important to remember that no matter how you decide to play your character, it's still gonna be silly and fun, because you're a character piloting a literal dumpster fire. So this game is really easy to read and start playing right away. When we played it here at IPR, we took about 30 minutes to open the box, read the rules, set things up, uh, before we really started getting into playing. And none of us had read the game ahead of time. The writing, in my opinion at least, is excellent. It's clear, it's crisp, it's easy to understand. Uh, and does a really great job in um, establishing a good tone. Uh, the game also is really good for both uh, one-shots, so if you want to just do a single session of this, you can, or it does provide the means to play the same characters multiple times, different raids, uh, over the course of you know a handful of, uh, of sessions, so you can do a miniature uh, campaign if you wanted to. If you like improvisational storytelling, silly antics, or pretending to be a raccoon, this game's for you. I can absolutely recommend this game to nearly everybody. This can be a single shot convention game, as well as something that long standing group uh, may play for a handful of sessions between a longer campaign. I can also see this as a great game to use as a foundation for something else. The rules can be easily altered, uh, added to, or expanded to uh, change the premise, uh, expand what is there, or include a GM. Last of all, but not least, I love what is provided in the physical box set and feel that it is absolutely worth getting your hands on. Uh, included in the box set is a set of rules, which includes facts about raccoons, uh, it has the, the neighborhood map, it has the character sheets, uh, it has your ship sheet, it has a list of possible trash that you can find in various places. Uh, it has a lot that you're going to need, and it's, it's awesome that you're going to be able to just photocopy stuff right out of the book. Uh, you don't necessarily have to download the PDFs and, and get your printer to um, cooperate. Good job in including everything. There's been games that I've read that don't include stuff. They expect you to go and download the PDFs, and uh, there's been times where I haven't been able to do that. It'd be better to have everything on hand right away. It also includes this great little die with a raccoon. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It has a little raccoon there for the 12th spot. And I actually really like that the each number is a different font. It kind of adds to the chaotic feel of the game. Also includes the sticker of a hectic electron, which is the name of the self-publishing imprint uh, that Chris Sellers has chosen to use. And last but not least, we have a deck of cards here. These are the deck of complications. Uh, the rules do have the option to use uh, regular playing cards, but I found that the, the cards were not only well designed, but um, uh, really helpful to have. I didn't have to reference a lot of sheets. They had everything right on the cards for me. So strap into the restaurant remains of that VW bug, kick the clothes dryer, and hope that the remains of the zipper carnival ride don't fall off as we ride to glorious trash. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe below and check out our Instagram at IndiePress underscore REV, as well as our Facebook page and Twitter. Subscribe to our newsletter. We only send out one email a month and it includes all the information and updates for that month, including what's new, what's back in stock, upcoming conventions, 
and even podcasts or blogs we think you'll like. Please like this video and press the subscribe button for more reviews and shenanigans. And remember gamers, this is my trash, keep your hands off. <laughs> <laughs>